Salutations, respected viewers. I'm George from Ireland, and here I am at Melbury Place, London. Behind me, you can see the blue plaque. That is the house where Quechuaia, the king of the Zulus, stayed in 1882. So he was born in approximately uh, 1832, uh, and he uh, was a rival for his half-brother to be the next king of the Zulus. His father was a man who had uh, many wives, Mpanda was his name, and uh, it wasn't clear which one of his many sons was going to succeed him. So there was an intense rival between Quechua and his half-brother, and indeed there was a battle in which Quechua's forces came out on top, and his half-brother and his supporters were exiled. And then in 1872, the father died, and uh, Quechua became the king of the Zulus. At this time, um, the Cape, as in the area around Cape Town, was a British colony, there were some Africana states, as in they were ruled by Dutch-speaking people of uh, uh, Netherlands descent, the Orange Free State and the Transvaal Republic. The British Empire was expanding in Southern Africa, claimed Natal as a British colony. Um, and the Zulus had had dealings with the Afrikaners, as in these Dutch-speaking whites, as well as the British. The um, British uh, High Commissioner in the Cape was Sir Bartle Frere and he wanted to expand the British Empire and he saw Zululand, a uh, quite mighty African state, as imperiling his designs. So he deliberately provoked war against the Zulus. There was a Zulu woman who uh, left Zululand, crossed the river into Natal and um, uh, took up with her paramour there. Her sons felt disgraced by this, so they crossed the river, dragged her back into Zululand and killed her. Now, according to Zulu custom, they were quite within their rights to do this because adultery had shamed the family. However, Sir Bartle Frere, uh, he exploited this as causus belli, and he presented a completely unreasonable uh, ultimatum to the Zulus designed to provoke war, saying that they must dismantle their military system and so forth. King Quechua was obliged to refuse, so the United Kingdom declared war. Really, it was Sir Bartle Frere. Um, as the Prime Minister, Disraeli said, they were prancing pro-consuls because communications were so slow, and there was no um, telegraph link at the time, um, these colonial governors could really do what they want. They were law unto themselves, and London would only find out about things post-factum. So, um, uh, the Honourable Thessica was in charge of the British Army there, and he led his soldiers into Zululand. There was a lot of the Natal native contingent, as in other African tribes who were on the British side, and they wore much the same clothes as the Zulus, but they'd have a red rag around their isikoko, which is like a um, leather halo resting on the head, the red cloth to indicate they were on the British side. Anyway, the Battle of Isandawana was a resounding Zulu victory, where they uh, killed well over a thousand British soldiers, suffered a similar number of casualties. Bear in mind the British had what was state-of-the-art military technology for the time. The Zulus mostly had Iron Age weapons, these spears called Asegais, um, Ase and um, I can't remember what the other one's called. Um, so that was that. But the Zulus lost in the end. The Battle of uh, Ulundi was their Waterloo. Um, surprisingly, despite having been uh, heavily defeated, Zululand was not annexed by the British Empire at that stage. Um, so Quechua went into exile. He came here to the United Kingdom. He was lionised by the British public. Queen Victoria invited him to dine with her at Osborne House on the Isle of Wight. He later returned to Zululand and he died in 1884. Later on, Zululand became part of the British Empire. There were a few rebellions, but they didn't get anywhere. So his descendants are still kings of Zululand. That's all.